Today, we are diving into a topic that I know is on many of your minds, especially when managing lipedema, sugar and its substitutes. We'll be talking about how sugar affects your body, how to manage those intense cravings and which sugar substitutes you should choose. Hi, my name is Dr. Alex Markov. I'm a double board certified plastic surgeon specializing in lipedema treatment. Let's face it, sugar cravings can feel almost impossible to control. For those of us dealing with lipedema, the battle can be even tougher. The truth is sugar isn't just about empty calories, it's a powerful substance that impacts your hormones, your brain chemistry, and ultimately your weight and overall health. When you consume sugar, especially in large amounts, it leads to a rapid spike in blood glucose. Your body then releases insulin to bring that sugar down. Over time, this constant roller coaster can lead to insulin resistance, common issue in lipedema, making it harder for your body to manage fat storage and even worsening the inflammation associated with lipedema. And those cravings they are not just in your head. I mean, I have a sweet tooth myself. Sugar actually triggers the release of dopamine in your brain, creating a temporary feeling of pleasure. Your brain then starts to associate sugar with this reward, leading to a vicious cycle where you crave more and more. This can be a major hurdle when you're trying to maintain a healthy diet and prevent weight gain, which is so crucial for managing lipedema. What can we do about it? Completely eliminating sugar can be very challenging, and that's where sugar substitutes come into play. But not all of substitutes are created equal. It's vital to understand the difference between those that can genuinely support your health and those that can be detrimental. Let's start with some of the better options for those with lipedema. First up, we have allulose. This is a rare sugar that's found naturally in small quantities in food like wheat, figs and raisins. What makes allulose special is that it's about 70% of the sweetness of the sugar but with almost no calories. Crucially, it doesn't rise blood sugar or insulin levels. But here's what's really fascinating about allulose. It actually occupies the same transporters in your gut that's responsible for absorbing glucose. By doing this, it can help to inhibit the absorption of other, more harmful sugars you might consume. This makes it a fantastic option for avoiding those blood sugar spikes and crashes that fuel cravings. Next up, we have stevia. Derived from the leaves of the stevia plant, stevia is hundreds of times sweeter than the sugar, but contains zero calories. Just like allulose, it doesn't elevate blood sugar or insulin levels. When choosing stevia, look for pure stevia extract or whole leaf stevia products, and be very mindful of brands that might mix it with other less desirable fillers. I also want to specifically mention an additive you might need to watch out for, maltodextrin. This is a highly processed white powder derived from corn, rice, or potato starch, and it's often used as a filler or thickener in many of the sugar-free or low-sugar products, including some sugar substitute packets. The problem with maltodextrin is that it has very high glycemic index, even higher than the actual table sugar. This means it can cause a rapid and significant spike in your blood sugar, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. So always read the ingredients list, even on the products that seem to be healthy. And finally, erythritol. This is a sugar alcohol found naturally in some fruits and fermented foods. It has about 70% of the sweetness of the sugar, but has almost no calories. Most importantly, it's absorbed into the bloodstream before it reaches the large intestine, meaning it doesn't cause the digestive upset often associated with other sugar alcohols. Alcohols. Now let's talk about the ones you might want to steer clear of. At least use them with extreme caution. So leading the charge here is aspartame sucralose and saccharin. While these are calorie free, they don't directly rise blood sugar, the impact on the body is more complex and concerning actually. The biggest concern with many of these artificial sweeteners is your gut biome. Emerging research suggests that they can alter the delicate balance of bacteria in your gut. A healthy gut microbiome is crucial for everything from nutrient absorption to immune function and it plays a significant role in managing inflammation, which is a paramount for lipidemia patients. Disrupting this balance can lead to increased inflammation, digestive issues, and even changes in metabolism that could paradoxically contribute to actual weight gain. Furthermore, some studies indicate that these artificial sweeteners, even though they don't contain sugar, they can still trigger a cephalic a brain phase of insulin response. This can perpetuate cravings and potentially worsen insulin sensitivity over time, which is exactly opposite of what we're trying to achieve when managing lipedema. My advice to you is be a savvy consumer, read labels carefully,
carefully, prioritize whole unprocessed foods. The goal here isn't just to cut calories, but to support your body and to reduce insulin resistance and inflammation, which are the key in managing lipedema effectively. If you suspect you might have lipedema, please know you're not alone. It's not your fault and there are knowledgeable healthcare professionals who can help. I hope you found this video helpful. Please click the like button and subscribe below. Thanks so much for watching.